Hey guys, it's Caden from Team Creative. Just want to welcome you to the third week of our series called Move. Are y'all ready to move? that you understand three basic positions. First, the gorilla. Raise your hands up and over your head as though you are a gorilla about to attack an angry raccoon. Now, the man. With your legs at shoulder's width, apply your hands to your hips like a man standing his ground against a high-pressure salesman. Finally, the net. Spread your fingers apart and cross your arms to make up a network of strands that can be used to entangle a friend pretending to be a gorilla. Mastery of these three basic positions will help you in many life situations, especially if you find yourself playing the gorilla game. Now if you lost, sit down. If you won, 
find another partner because the next round starts in five, four, three, two, one. Gorilla beats the man. The man beats the net. The net beats the gorilla. And if you tie, goodbye. One, two, three. Now if you lost, sit down. If you won, find another partner because the next round starts in five. Four, three, two, one. Gorilla beats the man. The man beats the net. The net beats the gorilla. And if you tie, goodbye. One, two, three. Now if you lost, sit down. But if you're still standing, congratulations because you won the Gorilla Game. again. Why are you here? Oh. Ooh. And why are you keep waking me up from my naps? Hi again, everybody. This is Miss Simmons. And it's time to get up and get moving. I don't want to get up and I don't want to get moving. My buddy Ernest is going to help me demonstrate my newest and latest and greatest exercise plan. Oh. <laughs> no, no I'm not. Come on Ernest, do you remember when Ma and his family were fleeing for their lives from the city of Sodom and Gomorrah? Uh, yeah, yeah I've read that in the Bible, I remember that story. Yeah. yeah, well, that is where I got my inspiration for my latest plan. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, you mean to tell me that God destroying two cities because of all of their sin has inspired you to create some kind of crazy exercise routine? Well, not that part. Oh, okay. The fling for their lives part. What? I'm not following you. You see, Lot and his family were in a bad situation, and God wanted them to move. Yeah? Uh, what are you doing? You see, when we're in bad situations, God wants us to move out of them. Uh -huh. Whether it's resisting temptation, or moving away from crowds who do the wrong thing, or if it's working out instead of sitting on your couch all day. Hmm. Ah, I see what you're trying to do here. But no, it's not going to work. I'm not moving. I'm not, I'm not going out there. Read my lips. I'm not going out there. I just want to stay on my couch, which I love. And I want to sleep, which I love. <laughs> Read my lips. You are going to love this even more. No. Read my lips. No, I'm not. Whoa. Come on, Ernest. No. Yes. I don't want to 
go. I don't want to move. I call it the flea with three. And you do it with the buddy. Ah, thank goodness. I'm not your buddy. <laughs> As you can see, our legs are tied together, so that means that we have to run at the exact same pace. Whoa, 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 whoa. Run? <laughs> this guy's not doing any running. No. And we better run fast because in just a moment, my assistants are going to release a hungry leopard to chase after us. What? A hungry leopard? I mean, a hungry leopard? <laughs> Whatever, you're crazy. Ugh, no time to explain. Ernest, we are in a bad situation. And as God said to Lot, it's time to move. Uh -uh. Why me? Why must you always... Less talking and more running. This leopard hasn't eaten in days. <laughs> Come on, Ernest. No. It's not that bad. Yes, it is. Running. I don't want to go. Like a I don't, I don't want to go. Come on, Ernest. It's not bad. In the land of Canaan, Abraham and his nephew Lot lived happy and prosperous lives. Both of them had a lot of animals, servants, and possessions. They had so many donkeys, sheep, goats, camels, and cows that they ran out of pasture. It came time for both Abraham and Lot to find a new home with bigger pasture for their herds. One day, Abraham and Lot decided to climb a high mountain that overlooked the entire valley. Abraham kindly said to his nephew, If you go to the left, I'll go right. 
If you go right, I'll go left. Lot looked around, and off in the distance, to the south, he saw the well-watered valley of Jordan. He also saw the city of Sodom, which at that time, he did not realize, was one of the most wicked cities in the world. But Lot didn't care. He wanted that beautiful land for himself. In the end, Lot chose the beautiful valley of Jordan and traveled away with his family, flocks, and herds. Abraham, on the other hand, went the opposite direction, each planning a new and prosperous life. When Lot and his family finally arrived in Sodom, it was much different than what they hoped for. It was an evil, sinful city with bad people. Lot and his family were the only people that served God, but they still decided to stay in that evil city. The city of Sodom was so sinful that God decided to judge it. He was going to destroy both Sodom and Gomorrah. Even though Lot was a righteous man, he had made a foolish decision by living in Sodom. It was time for him and his family to leave. God started his judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah by sending two powerful angels to help Lot and his family safely flee the city. Lot was afraid. He was hesitant to leave all his possessions, but the angels made it clear that everyone and everything in the city was going to be destroyed. As the angels were speaking with Lot, the evil people living in the city heard about it and came to Lot's house. They wanted to break down his door so they could harm them. They did not realize that these two men were angels from the Lord. Lot tried to argue with them, but the wicked men outside would not listen. At that moment, the angels sprung into action. They grabbed Lot, pulled him to safety, and faced the angry mob. Suddenly, all the wicked men were struck with blindness. They cried in terror, groping for the door and running around in a confused frenzy. It's time to go, the angels demanded. Grab your family and move out as fast as you can. Lot knew that they were right, even though he didn't want to go. Don't stop. Go as fast as you can. Don't look back. Lot ran. His daughters ran. His wife ran. But then, in a moment of foolishness and longing, his wife looked back. Immediately, she was frozen into a pillar of salt. Lot was torn with sadness, but he kept running. Lot was still running by the time the sun came up. At the moment that the sun peeked over the horizon, the Lord rained down fire on the city, and in a blazing explosion of heat, smoke, and light, Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed. Smoke billowed into the sky as the wicked cities burned to the ground, never to rise again. Hi guys, Mr. David from the Torch Demers campus. Today we're going to continue our series of On the Move and I've got my family on the move. We're going to go for a little hop, little hike, and a little walk and we're going to see what's at the end of this trail. Come on, go with us. Hey guys, you see that water running out there? Yeah. yeah. Do you think you can stop that water from running? Oh no, let's try it. I think I can. Go try it, Titus. Yeah, I I, I, Titus can do it. He can stop that water. Sadie, Sadie, go help him. He needs yeah. help. <laughs> Sadie's coming. What if we had 10 people? 10 people could probably stop that water, right? The water's moving. Never stopping. They couldn't stop the water. Okay, guys, as we said, we're talking about moving. Gotta keep moving. Just like the water rushing down the river here is constantly moving. And just like in the story you heard about Lot and Abraham, where God asked them to get up and move, and they moved. I know you guys have been out of school for a few days, or a few weeks, a couple of months. And you got all summer when your mom and dad wake you up in the morning and say, hey, let's get your day started. Time to get moving. 
get up and get moving, just like Lot did when God asked him to move. He got up, he left everything behind, and he moved. He even grabbed his most beloved ones and everything, and they all left. They never looked back. So when your mom and dad, when God asks us to move, we need to be in a good spirit, we need to be in a good place, and we need to be ready to move. I love you guys, and I miss every one of you. I can't wait to see you again. That was fun. It was really fun. Is that water cold? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's go get something to eat.